Greetings, adventure. Welcome to the D20 Academy podcast. My name is Shiloh. I'm Gabriel. And this is episode 38, World Building History. Welcome to the second part of our world building series. We'll be breaking down the world building topic into several different segments. This week we'll be talking about going over the topic of history. Yeah, history is its kind of a weird one. Yeah, there's a lot to it. And When we were trying to figure out how to split our <laughs> world building episodes into like, you know, different mm-hmm. overarching topics for our episodes, it's really hard. A lot of world building stuff kind of overlaps. Yeah, it's all intertwined, so it's hard to separate them into different segments. Yeah, so we're going to be going over the, the, the specific subtopics uh, right when the episode starts. But uh, yeah, we're going to be going over history today. And just a quick reminder before we jump into it, go follow us over on Instagram at, at d20 underscore academy. And we now have a Discord server. We have a Discord! Woo! So, unfortunately, because we aren't popular enough, I can't just put a link in posts. But, just let us know and we'll uh, hook you up with a link to the Discord server. It's going to be changing a lot of the upcoming days and weeks. Get some things going there. Might be some special things happening. Yeah, there's a lot of there's some stuff we want to do there. Uh, real quick... There's two mods, both me and Gabe. Um, Gabe is Rassigar, if you're ever wondering who that is. I'm, sh- I'm, sh- my Discord thing is shallow, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Also, I don't know anything about Discord. I have no idea how it works. Um, so, Gabe is going to be primarily overseeing that. Yes. I don't know we're, how it works. We're figuring it out. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. But, uh, uh, uh otherwise, let's, I'm really excited to get into this world building episode. The last one was really fun, so. Yeah. Let's get into it. Don't know much about history. Don't know much, much about bio. the... Oh, much biology. Oh my goodness, we're two lines in. <laughs> Don't know much about a science book. Don't know much about, about the French I took. Don't know much about the birds. birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Otherwise, guys. Otherwise, they've got good... I don't know. Welcome to the episode. <laughs> that was... Uh, should we do like a ask them like that was what a wonderful world by Sam Cooke. Next up, Son- Halsey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I don't know much about biology, but that 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 means the syllables are off. So I was confused. <laughs> hey guys, so this is <laughs> after great start. Have fun editing that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna edit that one. That's oh, just gonna okay. we're gonna straight. All right, summary about what we're doing today. Uh. In these road building episodes, we're going to be breaking down the main topic into smaller to- subtopics and then discussing each one of those. A part of that includes posing a list of questions about each of those that will help you build your world. Yep. Uh, world building is a long, detailed, and tedious process, um, so we also want to make this as digestible as possible, letting you guys what you should be prioritizing in world building and stuff. And also, this, these world building episodes, we talk about, you know, world building in any sense, whether you're writing a novel or you're creating a world for mm-hmm. your next D&D campaign, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, yeah, what are our subtopics today? In order, they are general history, level of technology, races slash species, nations, wars, conflicts, and mythology. Yeah, a lot of stuff to cover today. Yep. And like we mentioned in the introduction, some of this stuff doesn't kind of fits into physical world and the history yeah. and culture. and They're all over, kind of overlapping. History is just kind of the blanket term we were able to find for this stuff. But, uh, yeah, so if, if, if you're building the world kind of in the order that we're doing, we tried to release episodes in an order that you would build your world in. So you start with doing the physical world stuff, then you go into history, mm-hmm. then culture and magic and all that kind of stuff uh, in the next episodes we're doing. Um, but, yeah, so this is kind of the next step. But once again, you can world build in, in any order. You can. Yeah, this is yeah. just the way we think is a way that could work. Yeah, the, we are not at that all sense, like but... saying, yeah, this is exactly how you will be. You have to do this thing. You have to work on these things, prioritize these things. You you can do it however you want. There, there's no wrong way to build a world. Um, but, oh, yeah, man. Okay, we just, we, <laughs> we got to recover. Not... We got to recover from that, <laughs> that opening. Yeah. Uh, okay, general history. First subtopic. What is general history? <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of just a really Ulysses, big blanket S. term. Grant, we really, it's the history about dev generals, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, military generals, general That's, stores. General stores. Yep. Uh, for sure. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the general. <laughs> uh, that's the most important thing, I think. Yep. You figure out what shape is your world, you know, the mapping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Immediately go into general stores, general stores and military, military generals. generals. Yep. That's very important. 
No, uh, general history. These are just uh, bullet points and questions we couldn't really fit into any of the other ones. Just kind of blanket history. Yeah. Obvious history things. Like first off, how did how did your civilization begin? What caused yeah. it to happen? And yeah, so this is caused yeah, this is world. different from like the the physical world stuff. Because mm, yeah. in the physical world episode, we were like, how did your world, world begin? begin? How was it like formed? Yeah, yeah. But it's like how did civilization start? And yeah, yeah. Like from something or someone? Because mm. you know, history is honestly just like the record of civilization. Mm. Honestly, it's not like you know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. History is... Most history is written down from what certain civilizations can remember and what they have. You know, like, oh, we in the past did this. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to detail exactly on the fourth day of creation. Yeah. Well, a rock fell from a tree. Yeah, a rock fell from a tree. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think history is, is largely based off of civilization mm -hmm. and society, you know. Like the quote about, like, the winners are the ones who write history, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. kind of concept is, you know, people are the ones writing history. So we're not talking about, like, the the creation of your world and all that kind of stuff. But kind of like, when did civilization start? When did they start recording history? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Just like here on Earth. Yeah. So then you're next going to want to figure out, okay, what's the earliest record that we have? The earliest source of history that we have available mm -hmm. to, that the civilization has available. Yeah. Um, and also, this is a, pretty important one mm -hmm. uh how can your history be oh, oh sorry can your history be divided into significant eras mm -hmm. um this is okay mm -hmm. side note this is a super tangent that doesn't mean anything i say some things in an accent i just because <laughs> i said process and era yeah it's just the way you say those words i just i say them like in a in like like i'm british but i'm i'm process. not i'm like speaking an american accent but i'll just be like process era <laughs> um I don't know why. That's weird. Like, my parents don't speak like that. I don't know why I speak like that. It's just weird. Just, yeah. Hey, if you want to let me know... I don't think... I spell it cat me right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, those are the kind of things that have to do with, you know, just kind of general history things. Yeah. But, you know, dividing into significant era, eras, um, you know, we have, like, the Victorian era and the Industrial Age mm -hmm. and um, the Stone Age, right? <laughs> Wait, is the Stone Age, like, false? Is that real? I don't even know about history anymore. Um, and like, okay, wait, and does like the Triassic and Jurassic period, does that all kind of stuff? We don't know anything about history. <laughs> Disclaimer. We're going in, we're going to be talking for an hour about history. Mm -hmm. And we're not super big history people. I know like U.S. Like I'm pretty yeah. big on like U.S. history stuff, but that's recent. That's the past 200 years. Okay. Chalcolithic period? That's, that, what? What is that? Is the... Period of prehistoric Europe from around 3500 to 1700 BC. Uh, then Bronze Age, Iron Age, you know, just... Yeah, 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 all that different kind of stuff. <laughs> to give you an example of what we're talking about, are there these ages or stages in humanity yeah. in your world? And civilization. You know, things usually marked by level of te technology, which mm -hmm. we're going to get into here in a second, usually kind of marks those things. You know, yeah, the difference the between the Industrial Age yeah, and Information yeah, Age yeah. primarily is the level of technology. Um... Also, like, but, you know, you can come up with your own way that things are split. Um, in Middle Earth, in, in, in Tolkien land, um, the things are split by uh, in ages, mm -hmm. and I believe they're separated, they start and end with significant yes. world yeah. uh, shaking events, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, the you know, creation of the world started the first age, right? And then I don't know how the first no, age ended. The I want to say the second age and then the third age started when... Sauron was defeated, right? Yes. The army of yes. the elves and men. Um, and the third age, ended, third, third age ended when Sauron was destroyed at the end yes. of Lord of the Rings. The first age, en first age ended when uh, Melkor was cast into the abyss, as far as I remember. There's a big war between the Valor and whatever. Sure, 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 sure. So it's just marked by like, important things in history, like... Okay, when this important thing happened, then yeah. we start a new age or yeah. something. Or, or maybe you, maybe your world splits uh, these different ages and just like one thousand year yeah. spans. Yeah, it might or, be so. Yeah, so you can figure it out for your years. own world. So I'm designing a world right now for um, various different things I want to do with the world. I want to write some novels for. It. I want to maybe make a role playing game out of it. But uh, those eras are called rings, um, and I believe there's six that I have right now. It's mm -hmm. it's on the sixth one, and each one lasts. Up, like, each one's approximately, like, 2,000 years. They're so about as long as it takes to get through the ring cycle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, have you, dude, have you ever heard that? 
I mean, I've never uh, no, heard the whole not thing. The whole thing is so like... long. <laughs> is it about like a dwarf? Is it like what Lord of the Rings is based off of? No, I think it pulls some stuff from it. It's about them. dwarves who make a magical ring. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> tangents. <laughs> tangents. Um, <laughs> called rings. Um, and each of those is like starts and ends with like kind of like a, a big event. So one is like a big war against like these demonic forces. One was the assassination of a very famous world figure and stuff. One was the, one era was just like the rise and fall of a really, basically the equivalent of the Roman Empire in my world, um, and stuff. But yeah, I think that, I think that that's a, that's a pretty important one thinking about history. Yeah. Um, and you know, whatever you're playing, whether you're, you're writing a book or, or you're planning a campaign, honestly, what matters most is how the world is right now, right? In the present. Because that's what you're writing the story, and that's where the story is taking place. That's where the campaign is taking place. But I think it is good to have that knowledge. Just brief paragraphs, whatever. You know, you don't have to go super deep in, into history. But what has happened in the past? Has there been some sort of, like, ages or eras, you know, in, in the past that have kind of been able to shape your world? Big events and stuff. One helps immersion and stuff. When people refer... When yeah. NPCs and stuff refer to the historical things. Critical Role, Matthew Mercer does this really well. When he talks about the... Uh, there's a, some event that happened in oh, the history oh, of the world. Oh, the uh, divergence or something. Yeah. But they had, it's just, no, it, it's kind of has a different yeah. name. The catechumulism or something. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't say that correctly. Um, the, the, it's when the celestial gate was put up or something yeah. between the, I can't think what it is right now. It doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, when people refer to that and that does, you know, impact the world today. Um, but like, you know, for you, Gabe, would you say, if you're building a world, right? Would you say I st would you go I start with what the present is and I work backwards or I'm going to work up to the present age? Yeah, I kind of start with like an idea of what I would want the present to be. Then I figure out okay, what situations would lead up to this? And I find a situation I think would lead up to that that would mm -hmm. naturally progress to this point where I want to set the story. So you kind of work backwards. Like this thing exists, this is you know, kind of the history. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah, that's also kind of how I do it. But sometimes I think it's fun to just start at the the, the beginning. And just figure out how history has happened, and then it just ends at this mm. point. And that's the the present, so you can figure out how things are now and how things work. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we've talked about that long enough. Next, level of technology. So technology is a big important thing when it comes to civilization, the general history of a world. Yeah, for sure. And the progression of technology changes so much in how you like, write civilizations and write your story basically mm -hmm. inside a lot of things. So you want to first figure out how advanced is technology in the current era, the current place and time that you're setting your story. Uh, you could use today as an example. You can use a historic point. Yeah. The, like, from earth's own history that you can use to relate to your, to I your think, viewers. I think that's, that's, that's really good. You know? really useful tool, honestly. Like you'll see people use like, Oh, it's like kind of like medieval yeah. right now. So it just gives a brief idea, brief synopsis of what, yeah technology is like in your yeah. world at that time your classic high fantasy world uh, is typically is based around our earth's medieval yeah. uh, era in europe um you know level of technology in the sense that you know there are like kingdoms and knights and like that's mm -hmm. the level of technology uh mostly like fiefdoms right were mostly the governmental system and stuff um but that level of technology we had i right we had iron and stuff we had mm -hmm. weapons and armor we didn't have guns yet we didn't have um, certain efficient ways of, of travel, travel. Or stuff we like had that. like siege weapons so you can, technology can factor into a lot of different things yeah. in your world so you want to figure out where are we right now yeah i, I think finding a starting point on earth's timeline mm -hmm. i think that's a really useful thing and then shaping it to you know your world is not earth yeah. you probably have some magic or monsters or whatever that sets your world apart now how has that impacted you know, the level yeah, exactly. of technology. Because, exactly. you know, certain... You may be... Oh, it's like medieval era. But... I add this. You certain know? things are higher tech because of magic mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, like, people can get messages faster because there are dragon riders or yeah, whatever. Or something like that. You know? Yeah. So it's just nice to have, like, a base to build off of. You know, mm -hmm. if you're, okay, I'm picking, picking the Victorian era, but I'm adding magic, I'm adding alchemy, I'm adding this, I'm adding yeah. that... And so then you have to figure out how that works in, but you have a nice base starting place to work from. Mm -hmm. It's familiar to you and to your mm -hmm. audience. I think steampunk. I love steampunk. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I know, but I think that is a great. Yeah. Um, of taking a base idea yeah. and then adding Victorian era, but yeah. 
steam powered things, mm -hmm. alchemy, maybe some magic, depending on the kind of steampunk world we're talking about. Um, you know, there might be even like automatons. Mm -hmm. Usually, like, there's like blimps and stuff. Uh, I, just, I love steampunk. I think it's one of the coolest aesthetics. I, I love steampunk a lot. But um, I think that's a good example of you know taking a point in history as kind of a, a starting point and mm -hmm. then um, figuring out okay, but these things exist in my world. Yeah. So technology is, is a bit different. Yeah. So you want to figure out what is different in your world than in that place in history, in Earth's history, and figure out how does the technology and things that I'm adding change the environment and change from what I might exactly picture the medieval era would be like. How do I picture the medieval era with dragons and magic? Mm -hmm. How does it affect the different parts of society, the world, the way people move around the, the kingdoms or mm -hmm. move around the earth and things like that? You're going to figure out how the technology impacts the everyday life of people. Yeah. Um, going back to Critical Role because, I mean, there's so many things you can learn from that, but that world is kind of classic high fantasy middle age mm -hmm. but it's on the brink of a new era because yeah. black powder is going to come up one of the characters is kind of the one who invents firearms mm -hmm. there's a sky ship that that is kind of a, a newer invention that that is featured in the campaign um so that's also you know that level of technology is, is kind of improving and so matthew mercer kind of says, okay, so these levels, you know, these certain mm. things in technology, we have airships and, and maybe some firearms mm. and stuff. So this is how people have to, re you know, kind of react to that. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, this is this is very important. This is imperative, I think, to your, to your story and your world, mm -hmm. is the level of technology, for sure. Yeah. It's, it factors into a lot of, like, how real the world feels. Mm -hmm. Like, if you establish that there's technology that can do X, Y, and Z, but the characters never use that to do X, Y, and Z... Just because, oh, yeah. it makes things hard for you to it, it work feels, out. It feels like or... a cheat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, why didn't they just... Yeah, why didn't do... they just do that? Um, so, here's a question. Here's something I don't even know. The Pathfinder world. Mm -hmm. Does it fail at this? Here's the thing. I don't. We're not super big on the Pathfinder world. We don't know a ton about it. But from what I've seen, mm -hmm. because I've studied it... You know, yeah, over, like, yeah. I know, I know, like the you know the general. I know all the regions. I know mm -hmm. some pretty important things in the history and everything. There is a literal starship, yeah, that's crashed in the ground, and there's some robots, and there's also elves with bows and arrows. So I'm just a little. Do they fail at this level of technology thing because it's way different in parts in different parts of the world and stuff, and just doesn't really make sense? From what you've seen, what do you think? I think it's relying on the fact that. All those things that seem out of place also seem out of place to the rest of civilization there. You know, are talking about, like, the spaceships and things like that. That they're all alien, feels like alien to the world. But I think it's, might, meant, might be meant to feel that way. Yeah. Like, like, this part of the world is such a hodgepodge of different things. And there's, like, old cultures and spaceships from a different land that no one knows about. Yeah. There's wars going on here. There's elves with bows and arrows. And... There's firearms in this place. Yeah. I, for me personally, mm -hmm. I actually don't think it does this very well. For mm -hmm. me, it's kind of like, you know, I don't actually know about the spaceship. I just know that there's a spaceship crash <laughs> somewhere in the world. I don't actually know, like, but, like, mm -hmm. in my mind, like, that's a hotspot. People are going there. People are studying that. People are trying to learn mm -hmm. about that technology. And that's going to impact the rest of the thing. There's also, like, robots or something. I don't know. I've, it's it's a weird world. And there are also, like, our firearms in certain places. Yeah. And so it's a little, yeah, I, I, I think the level of technology is, t is too, it's not set down well enough, and I think it, it takes a little away from the world. Mm. But I also haven't, don't know a ton about the world, and so there may be reasons for all this kind of stuff, so I don't want to say yeah, anything. Yeah, neither of us have gone super in-depth with the world, and as far, as far as I've learned, that's the only thing that really sticks out to me, like this, you know, the literal alien spaceship. <laughs> yeah. In a part of the world called the Broken Lands. So, I don't know if there's more instances like that, or if that's like a unique situation and they have yeah. exp explanations for it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, this next one's a fatty. <laughs> this next one is a really big topic. So. Yeah. Races and species. Yep. What intelligent races and species populate your world? Mm hmm. This you is a big one. Yeah, you're gonna figure this out. This is uh, pretty important. Now, I'm all for your high fantasy elves, dwarves, humans, and stuff. Mm. Orcs, whatever. But, 
I think it's just true for both of us. Recently, I've been really into humans. <laughs> Human-based worlds. I like humans. I don't know. There's... <laughs> I would I would hope so. Uh, I'm really into human based worlds recently, mm. like just humans. Um, maybe there are like there can be mystical mm. creatures, like maybe, but like the elves are like weird kind of alien, mysterious kind of beings or whatever. Mm. Straying away from kind of Tolkien esque classic high fantasy dwarves, elves, humans. Uh, recently, I've really been into human based worlds. I I really like that. I like human based worlds for the simple fact that. It's kind of familiar, you know? It has yeah. a familiarity of, we know what humans can do. And there might be the, all these other fantastical elements, but it's always that grounding moment where people can put themselves more easily in the character's spots, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like, it might be hard for some people to picture themselves as this dragonborn adventuring. Perha perhaps if it's just, like, a human doing that, mm -hmm. it might be easier to figure that out. I think it's just something that's familiar and, like, we also know so much about humans. Just as like as a reader, you know, of all you know fantasy races, humans. we know the we know most, most about, about humans. humans. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty true. That's pretty true. And also, just in typical fantasy, humans have the sort of ambiguous nature. Yeah, they can, where be, they can be on any end of the spectrum, yeah. anywhere along it. They yeah. kind of fill any job. Mm -hmm. They adapt to th their surroundings. That makes it really versatile. Yeah, for sure. Um, we. We haven't played this in a while, but we had played a little bit of a role-playing game called Iron Swarm. Mm. Um, great role-playing game. It's a solo, basically it's an RPG that doesn't need a game master. Mm -hmm. um, so you can play by yourself, which is a little weird. <laughs> I still don't understand how you can do that. Um, or you can like play it with your friends, but you're all PCs. Yeah. You can play with the GM, but uh, it's cooler when you don't. Um, basically, the, the theme and stuff is pretty loose. It's fantasy, but it, it's more Viking, gritty, yeah. realism, kind of uh, dark, uh, dark, uh, what is it, what is it called? Grimdark? Uh, yeah, grimdark, yeah. Kind of genre. And, you know, there's there's a section when, when you start playing the game, there's a world-building exercise you do where they give you prompts and you kind of build mm -hmm. out your world and then you go on and build your character and then you can play the game. Um, but, like, in the prompts when it's asking about, like, what about, like, elves and giants and all that kind of stuff, I'm always prone to making them, like, those are mystical, hidden... Mm -hmm alien people, and mostly it's just, like, humans on the Earth. Because that that fit, in my mind, the Viking grimdark mm. genre. Another thing about that is making the elves and other intelligent beings that mystical presence makes the world feel that, just that much more, you know, fantastical and otherworldly. Because so you have these yeah. other creatures that are... It's not like they're just functionally the same as other humans. Yeah. But they're just so different, and they're, you know, might be alien yeah. to this world. You don't know what, but it just adds a bit of fantastical element. Yeah, I, I think it has to do with the story kind of you're trying to tell and the mm -hmm. genre of of the setting that you're trying to build. You know what I mean? If you want to have that classic high fantasy thing, like having elves and dwarves and halflings, just like integrated into society and stuff, that's fine. Middle earthy, just that kind of thing. Um, but if you're doing more of a grimdark or whatever, more of a mysterious, you know viking kind of esque thing then maybe it's better just have kind of just human based not yeah. a lot of other kind of intelligent races i think races it's just important races. to figure out what fits the world that you're trying to build you know yeah. whether it fits to have them all integrated or separated or maybe it's just one specific species yeah, yeah. next you want to figure out what your species look like and where do they live Important so much things. stuff. Yeah. Then you have to detail you can dive into that very deeply <laughs> into the race. We're not going to just go through all the cuz yeah, no. There's tons of different questions you have to ask yourself when you're creating a fantasy race. Um, I assume you're going to be basing it off another thing. You're going to have elves in your world. You know, if you're going to have elves in your world, mm -hmm. probably basing you have it off a lot of like sources. You can Tolkien base elves or something like that. Um, so you don't have to go too crazy, unless you're building like a whole new race of species no one's seen before. Mm. Which case, good on you. Go for it. That's cool. But the scope of that isn't going to be covered in this episode. Yeah, we're not going to go through all the different questions. Where do they live? Where are the biology? All that kind of stuff. Um, you hopefully know <laughs> how that works. Um, but, you know, after figuring out the different kind of races and species that kind of fit into your world, another question is, how do they perceive each other? Mm. How do they coexist? Or maybe they don't. Yeah, perhaps there are you know several different species, and they all you know, fear or have different different complicated relationships with each other and perhaps they 
uh, disapprove of, you know, mixing with the other races. Perhaps they see them as enemies or monstrosities. You want to figure out how they perceive each other and what they think of the other races. I believe in the player's handbook for 5th edition, at the end of each race, there is a block where it's that race's view on the other races. Yes. I, I think, think so. that is a thing. In players... So something along those lines. I'm pretty sure it's in the player's handbook. I'm pretty sure you're right, yeah. In the races uh, part, chapter. So something along those lines, I think, is uh, cool. Um, figure, figure you know, that out. Now, of course, the, the, do, in doing this, you're kind of generalizing the, the race or whatever. Mm. Like, all elves hate dwarves or whatever. And within your story, whatever, you might, you know, not everyone is like that. Yeah. But I think this is, a, is an important thing. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's alright to set up things so you can subver subvert it for a character later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sure. want to figure out what the general stance is. Yeah. And also, lastly, but definitely not least important, yeah. what makes them different from each other? Because mm. I think fantasy suffers a lot from making yeah. all these different fantastical races, but they all function the same way, you know? And it just makes it feel so disappointing. You know, when you have this crazy race of elves, but they just live like humans. Yeah. And I, I have a question, Gabe. Mm -hmm. what is, can you explain to me the difference in D&D &D mm -hmm. between halflings and gnomes? One of them's shorter than each the other one. Halflings, sure. yeah. yeah. Halflings are uh, typically a foot shorter. Mm -hmm. Half a foot, excuse me. Um, halflings get a bonus to charisma. Okay, not mechanically. Get a, not mechanically. <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. That's... <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can't tell you a difference. Yeah. Um, there is. Yeah. In fifth edition, like there is. I don't know if it's communicated very well. And at first glance, when you pick up a, uh, you know, the fifth mm -hmm. edition player's handbook, whatever. This is true for me and for people that, you know, I've helped at least like 30 to 50 people create characters for this game. I've helped a ton of people create characters for this game. I like getting people involved. Um, and I like creating characters with, with new players, getting them into the hobby. Um, so I've, you know, first of all, I've basically, like, memorized character creation. Um, but the races and stuff, I've, I'm like, okay, do you hear the races? Dwarves, elves, humans, and I read them off. Mm -hmm. And I always get asked, like, okay, wait, what's the difference between a gnome and a halfling? <laughs> they look similar. Yeah. There, there are differences, but, like, I think the rock gnome is pretty, like, the rock gnome is, like, that's a gnome to me. Mm. But when you get to the Force Gnome, it's pretty similar to just, like, a halfling. Yeah. And also kind of an elf, and elves are kind of similar to half, And it all kind of blends together. Elves, dwarves, humans, distinct. Mm. Those are typically different. You can, you know, even at first glance, looking at art, you can tell the yeah. difference between yeah. them. And almost in halflings, look at that art. Yeah, I think the art is a big problem, making them look too similar. Because... One of the big issues about making things different is that when you're describing something or perhaps you're playing a character in a world, you want to make sure that your players or your readers have a distinct image in their mind yeah. that they're thinking of. Helps them connect to that character. Helps them feel what they're feeling and see what they're seeing. But if they get the confused between, okay, what's a gnome, what's a halfling, yeah. and they're unsure what to think of, unsure what it looks like, mm -hmm. it can interfere with a lot of things. Even if like their culture and stuff is really different. like mm. Gnomes live in the mountains, and they are super xenophobic, and halflings live in hobbit holes in the hills, or whatever, and they love smoking and eating, or whatever. Even if you have super different, like, cultural differences, or whatever, mm -hmm. if they, like, look the same, or whatever, your readers, or your audience, whoever it is, your players, will still get confused. Are we talking about halflings, or yeah. no? Because, so, you know, because they look similar, or whatever. So it is important. Yes, it is important that the cultures and you know, the races are different in, in that regard, mm -hmm. but also that biologically and, and physically, they look different and you can tell them apart. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I was saying, I think it just helps a lot with mental imaging and making sure you, you are picturing things correctly. H having the physical differences, the biological differences, just helps so much more with immersion yeah. and player interaction, I find. When you know what you're talking about, you have a distinct image in your mm -hmm. head. I mean, like, Dragonborn, right? Mm-hmm. First glance, you you can tell what a dragon, kind of dragonborn is. You're not mixing a dragonborn up with any other race. You know, you're not getting that mixed up with any other race. So, 
Why are you looking at me? Cobalt. <laughs> Cobalt? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, niche example. <laughs> Tiefling. Super distinct. Tiefling, sure. Yeah. You know, even, but hey, you read the chapter in the player's handbook? What is really their culture and stuff? They honestly don't give a lot of information about like, what a tiefling true. is. But so many people plan because they look cool. They're really distinct and yeah. stuff. Um, Gives a good mental image. Yeah. For the players so to that's, a, that's a good note. I think that's pretty important. All right. Next topic. Nations. On your side. Nationwide. Nationwide is, is on, on your side. side. Hey, guys. Go and DM us on Instagram if you want us to sing more because I think... <laughs> That's why you're here, right? You're here for our singing, right? Our perfect harmony, mm -hmm. I think, in the beginning of the episode. It was beautiful. Lyrics memorized. Lyrics memorized. The line about the birds and bees, that's a part of the song. We didn't add that. <laughs> uh, oh, don't right. know my... Yeah, anyway. Nations. Nationwide. What are the different nations in the world and how have they evolved from the nations of your world's history? Nations. Big, big, big thing. <laughs> this is a really important thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, here's something to think about. Here's something that I, I still kind of get a little, not confused about, but there's a lot of intricacies when it comes to separating things on a map, right? Because you have different land masses, right? Kind of like continents. Within each of those, you may have different regions, are those regions split into different nations now? Now are those nations split into different cities, countries, provinces? And then things just can get kind of crazy. There's so much to go yeah, into when it comes to, to this topic. Separ how you separate things. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing to figure out is how do you separate things? Do you have it by continents, regions, cities, or settlements? That could be it. That's how Machvin starts. Machvin Star does not have regions. Yeah. It actually well, does... Kind of, like, it's near the divide. No, no, okay, but, like, they're actually... I did make regions. Oh, did. I did. After the campaign. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember yeah, any yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did after the campaign. But, anyway, that was just split into... There's two continents. Mm. Kind of settlements or whatever. This other world that I was talking about... That I'm talking about, the, the other one that I'm building, mm -hmm. um, with the rings in recording history, has different continents... Each of continents has different regions, and with each of those regions, they all have different nations and provinces. Wow. Yeah. But that's kind of how Earth is yeah. separated as well. Um, Middle Earth. I mean, Middle Earth is just a, such a prime example of world a building. A lot of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going to keep talking about it in these, this world building series. I believe it's split into regions and nations? Yes. Because Rovanian has... Rovanian is the region, right? And then within it is like... Uh, you have... You have uh, uh, there's Arid... Er Eridor? Is that no, a region? No, 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 It's... I'm trying to see, but I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Rovanian, right, is the one on the... What is it? Eridor? Arid is it Eridor? Was I right? Yeah, Eridor is the western... Region and then within area door there there is the Minwaith and then the Shire and all that those are like different nations I guess yeah and then like kind of in the south I don't know if, what that region is called but then then it's split into Mordor Gondor Rohan that kind of stuff yeah so different regions of the continent of Middle Earth and in those regions there are different nations or different settlements yeah and then within the nations are different settlements yeah anyway that's something you want to figure out okay back to nations. Nations are different from regions. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, a region is a geographical, physical world thing. I think it typically is, yeah. And nation is, like, for simplicity's sake, it may not like, you know, in the fine print, mm -hmm. the detailed explanation of one. But for me, or for the purposes of this, when we say region, we're talking about geographic, physical world regions. Mm. Nations are political. Yeah. Nations are political. They are... Economic, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna figure out what your nations are gonna be. How many do you want to have? Are they based off just geographic location, or perhaps they have parts that are spread out over a large part of the map? You want to figure out the bounds of your nations. Uh, how many are there? How long have they existed? What's the history of a nation? 
that you're going to want to have and how they've evolved from that start, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of a deep it's thing. It's a detailed thing. It's a deep yes. thing to think about is how has the nations nowadays evolved from the nations of the past? But obviously, you know, if you think about Earth, that's literally how mm-hmm. it is, you know? The nations we have today are a product of the past, things that have happened in the past, certain boundary lines, the size countries are, the cultures within certain countries are the way they are mm-hmm. because of, you know, because so many nations have risen and fallen over the course of yeah. history. This is another one of those topics that you can get as deep as you want to. Yeah. And nations is something you can detail so much about. You can detail nations in the past that have fallen, but something was born from that that started this yeah. nation is now blah, 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 blah. You can get as deep as you want, but you just want to know if you're having regions in your world, you want to have nations in your world, you want to figure out what are the ones that are going to be important? What do I need to detail? Do they have history? What is it? Mm-hmm. And I think also, this is also something to think about, um, is in your world, and this also kind of has to do with physical world mapping kind of stuff, is there open space? Mm. Is there unclaimed territory? Right? On Earth, that doesn't exist anymore. Right? The whole world has been colonized. Everything is a part of a, a nation. Right? Except for like international waters. But yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, all land masses or whatever, yeah. right? But in some, you know, in some fantasy worlds or whatever, there may still be regions that have not been claimed by a, a nation yet mm. that are lawless or whatever. So, you know, while you're splitting your world into like regions and or nations mm-hmm. or whatever, are there areas as well that don't belong to anything that are still considered like the wild mm. or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to keep in mind here. Uh, it can be very important or just... You know, sideline thing. Nations yeah. don't have to be necessarily the main topic of your campaign, story, whatever. But it's just nice to have. It can provide a lot to the story when you have a detailed nation. Uh, can we move on? Uh, no, the, this, the next one here I think is, is pretty important. Mm. Are nations tied to particular geographic regions? Which is what kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Or, and this is a classical fantasy one, to certain races. Like... The Lothlorien is the elf city. Uh, Erebor Dwarf. is the dwarf mm-hmm. city or whatever. Rohan is the human city. Middle-earth, very racially based um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, nations, right? I mean, there's no elves or dwarves in Gondor. That's full human. Mm. No elves or no uh, dwarves or humans in Lothlorien. Uh, I'll say something. Sorry, just going on a niche thing in my mind about uh, the world of <laughs> Middle Earth. Not important. But yes, what you're saying is is true. They are very segregated, to say. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, this is the Dwarf Nation, this is the Human Nation, Elf Nation. And the history of Middle Earth establishes reasons for those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, there are reasons why these nations are split up like that. So you want to figure out, okay, are nations tied to a particular ge- geographic region? Is that is there a reason why are they tied to a certain race? Is there a reason why that certain race is just that, that nation? Yeah, but real quick, Todd's talking about how nations can be tied to particular geographic regions. You know, if your nation is, you know, this is the boundaries, mm-hmm. it might end at a river or whatever because it's hard to cross that river and then take land on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's because of the physical geography of the land that has put restrictions on the boundaries of a nation, right? Um, so, you can't just, you know, take your map, get a pencil, and just carve out a little section of land. Hey, this is a nation. Mm-hmm. Because there may be rivers and mountains cutting through it and stuff, and can a nation really, you know, be able to be in all those places at once and stuff, so. Yeah. You're, you're going to want to figure out why are the nations divided like this? You know, if you're going to have several different uh, nations that aren't necessarily divided by strict geographic, you know, restraints. Like, oh, there's a massive ocean between these two, so that's why it's separated. But perhaps it's just like, you know, there's this hard across river, and this one nation couldn't conquer o- over the yeah. land on that side, and so that land got, you know, captured by this nation or whatever. But yeah, you're going to want to figure out if the nations are tied to a particular region, and if that region is, is restraining them yeah. to that specific place. Or, you know, maybe it's the environment is allowing them to take more mm-hmm. ground because yeah. of the way it is. Um,. Yeah, and then just real quick, going back, and we're kind of bouncing back, but like to the certain races thing. One kind of classic high fantasy world trope is like, this is the city where you can find all different races. This is kind of like the 
great melting pot of mm-hmm. the world or whatever. I feel like that's kind of a trope. Um, but, you know, like, you know, Middle Earth, there's reasons and stuff why there's the dwarf, dwarf city, the elf city, whatever, right? Their nations are separate. But a lot of, I think, a lot of high fantasy th- stuff nowadays is much more mixed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right in that. It does seem to be a lot more. The great big melting pot. Yeah. Were you seeing Schoolhouse Rock? Yeah. The Great American Melting <laughs> Pot. Yeah, wasn't isn't like all that stuff wrong? I heard like all their facts were like wrong. Like most of their facts are wrong. Who knows? It's a kids musical. I, like it's so. I heard like the show is so, like outdated and stuff. Like the like the facts they were giving, are like false. Anyway, I feel old yet? <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock. Did you watch that when you were young? Feel old yet? No. Uh, you didn't? Oh my God, no, I didn't. What? You didn't watch the cartoon? No, I was too busy watching Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Alright, next one. Wars and conflict. This is another... Big, his- big boy history Big time. one, yeah. yeah. Wars boy are time. very important when it comes to history. Wars can dictate so much about how, how your world develops. Yeah. Um... Different relations between different nations and different races. How, how time is separated, yeah. like in, in Middle Earth. It can change so much. You want to figure out how has war affected your history? What points in history has war been a big thing? What events has it caused? How does it shape the culture of the present day? Mm-hmm. World build- this, is just, this is just a basic world building thing. Mm-hmm. It, but world building is just... And we talked about this a little bit last episode. It's just a weird thing because... You kind of have to be working on multiple things at once mm-hmm. because they're all kind of based off of other things. Yeah. It's... Okay, look. Building a world is so hard. There's so many pieces that go into it. Honestly. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're thinking about history and then ah, now has that affected the prison and the level of technology and all this kind of stuff, it's so much to think about. Yeah. For one person, or maybe you're building a world with, like, a friend, but typically one person is building a world. To be doing things at a realistic level as you know, compared to how Earth's history has happened, which has had millions of people influence it, right? Mm. To have one person figure out the history, it's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. Actually, in fact, talking about this episode, I don't, it's making me less enthusiastic about building my worlds. Because <laughs> like, oh yeah, there is all this stuff I, I forgot. But once again, what's important? What yeah. do you need to prioritize? Yeah. In your opinion, Gabe, wars in history, how, how does, how important is that? It can, it can vary based on your world, but I think wars are very powerful in changing your world. So, I think it's kind of a necessity for most developed worlds with a long history. Wars are going to happen. Unless there's something mm-hmm. stopping wars, wars are going to happen. Regardless. So, you're going to figure out how much you want to go into detail about that but know that naturally wars happen, and they are going to change the world. It can change worlds culturally, economically, geographically, you know? Mm-hmm. Parts of the world can be burned down or yeah. raised by war. Yeah. There's so many things that war can cause. So if you are going to detail a large war in the history of your world, figure out how it affects your current present day. Because I assure you that it can. Because we can trace yeah. things... Back to wars in the past. Yeah, like, I, I, I this think wars affected this. Wars are vastly important. If you look, <laughs> if you look at our history and what they've affected, you know, um, when I was doing my world building, I was tr- I was doing basics of the history of my world. What happened in each of the mm-hmm. rings, and I looked up like the twenty most important events in Earth's history. Just get, get an idea. What is impactful? What matters? Mm-hmm. What do I should I be spending my time on that that is relevant to just giving an outline of the history, and. Obviously, both world wars were in there, mm-hmm. but also, like, the Revolutionary War. Yeah. That impacted the whole world because of what it meant for democracy and mm-hmm. all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and if you look at just uh, uh, American history, the civil a lot of people say the Civil War is the most important event in American history because of how it showed, you know, it, it, it totally has an impact on modern American culture mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and society. And it just shows so much about America and democracy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it still it's it affects us to this day. There are certain you know parts of the United States that still feel like the war is still going on. There's still people who yeah. feel like it's ongoing. It's like an ongoing event. So 
what we're trying to say is wars are so important to building yeah, your yeah. history. But but if if you know if you don't need a war to have happened, if it doesn't mean anything, you don't need to. Yeah, you don't, work don't on just it. throw wars in <laughs> there. <laughs> Just because, oh, I think they should be yeah. fighting now. I just, I just want fights. <laughs> but, you know, if it's relevant to your, to your yeah. story and your campaign, or, you know, even if you're just like, I think there should be a war in history, whatever, start going off on it, start writing about mm -hmm. it, and see if it sparks anything, any ideas or whatever. They're like, okay, that probably means that nowadays mm -hmm. these two nations are at odds, mm -hmm. or this part of the world is now dangerous, or whatever, right? I think that's a super viable option because, you know, maybe when you're hearing us explain these, you're like, oh, gosh, I really have to prioritize, you know. Yeah, no. Sometimes, just like, I think there should be a war. And you just, like, start writing mm -hmm. and see where it will take you. You know, I think that can, that, that works if for so many aspects of world building. I think that's a... Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a lot of wars. But if you are going to put wars in, we're just saying, like, there's so many ways you can take that. You know, there's so many ways you can have that war affect your history. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice to keep that in mind. And, and study a little, it, yeah. like a little bit the history of wars. Mm -hmm. How do they start? How do they work? Um, I think also wars are kind of important because war is literally like a campaign style. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know if genre is the right word, but when you're running a campaign, you're figuring out your tone, your mood, or whatever. Is it a mystery? Is it intrigue? Is mm -hmm. it high adventure? War is one of those categories. Um, the second Critical Role campaign. Big war theme. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're going to have... You, know, you want a story like that. You want to have war things. Important. You may want to be like, there might have been wars in the past that have led up to this war. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, World War II happened because of World War One. Mm -hmm. So it's the war that you're it, that the campaign is in now or it's, it has brewing or whatever in your, in your yeah. story. A result of other wars. Or a great example is like in the Middle East, there are conflicts going on now that are the result of things that have happened so yeah. far in the yeah, past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't want to talk too much about like our own world or mm -hmm. whatever, but I mean, Earth is such a good. It's our <laughs> only, yeah, ex real <laughs> example we can look at <laughs> on how things work. So studying Earth, I think, is a. Uh, uh, helpful and, and and can really mm. make your world so realistic. the lesson of today is just be a historian <laughs> know everything about the history of the world and then you'll be able to write the history of another world well that's just because this episode's on history mm -hmm. uh, last one though science <laughs> yeah you need to be a scientist uh study geography yep the next few ones are gonna be about culture you know you know those liberal arts yeah <laughs> And the la you know, we, we're going to do a world building episode of magic and like mm. magicians. Hey, hey, all the magicians listening. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbits out of the hat. Your expertise is finally coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. hey, 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 kid who did card tricks in middle school. Hey, show it off. <laughs> that was me. Okay. Oh, uh, we talked about that stuff. Weaponry. Weaponry. <laughs> Ooh, weapons. What about weapons, Gabe? What weapons are predominant in your world? Yeah. Big thing to start out with. Big thing. Level, uh, tied to level technology. Yep. I was just about to say that. If you're going for a medieval world, you already have an idea of what weapons are going to be in your world. You know, you're going to have spears, shields, swords, maces, metal armor. But you're also going to have things like siege weapons, you know, like catapults and things like that based on where in the medieval era you are. Weapons are heavily tied in with... The level of technology. So, I think that's a great starting place for when you want to figure out what kind of weapons I want to have in my world. Once you've figured out what you know, approximate place in Earth's history you want to base things off of, or if not, figure out the level of technology in your world, then you can, from there, figure out, okay, because of this level of technology, what weapons would have been made? What would have yeah. been used? Yeah. Yeah. And what is available. Yeah, this is directly proportional to your level of technology. Mm -hmm. If you have guns, you probably also have other things, yeah. right? How do people defend against guns? How do people, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, next point. Who makes the weapons? How do they work? And how easy is it to obtain certain weapons? You can just go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if you look at history, right? Certain cultures, certain tribes or whatever, depending on their geographic re region... Some people were like, 
super easy to make bows, fletch arrows. Mm. So they were predominantly archers. Other people access to lots of um, ores and mm -hmm. mining, so mm -hmm. they were predominantly based on iron and steel or whatever. But yeah, how rare are you know certain weapons and 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 who makes who makes the weapons? Yeah, and you're onto something great there about what is available for the cultures and or people or nations to build weapons from. You know, perhaps there's a lack of metal and they counteract that by using more wood as like the base of things and adding mm -hmm. metal on top of that. Or perhaps mm -hmm. it's a high technology world, but there's a lack of electricity. Like, how do they circumvent that? And even getting this little bit of a tangent, kind of a little deeper, but like, is your is this nation? Uh, are they big on husbandry? Mm. Have lots of horses. Now, are the weapons built for cavalry more? You mm. know, now now it's functioning towards cavalry and stuff. All that as well yeah. stuff you may want to think about. You can also make like, there are special weapons that you can make. I you love have, I love special weapons in worlds. You can have things like you know Thor's hammer, Captain America's shield. All sorts of different special like weapons. Big, that... famous, yeah. mythological weapon things. Yeah. Love that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely Sword for... of Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Definitely for things like RP tabletop RPGs and stuff. Mm. These things as rewards. Yeah, yeah that's big. Juicy. Um, going, you know, a quest, go to the tre the dragon's horde. Fight, go through the traps, confront the dragon, and in the horde you find this lost magical sword that was once the... Mm -hmm. So cool. <laughs> I, I love I love unique, special weapons kind of yeah. things. Um, in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, there are a very limited amount of special weapons called shard blades, which are basically these powerful swords and cut through anything. And when they cut through a person, um, instead of, like, cutting their flesh, it, like, kills all the nerves, like, there. Mm. So if, like, you swipe it through their arm, it's going to cut the clothing on their arm because it cuts all physical things, but that arm will just shrivel up and it no longer functions or whatever. Mm. So if you cut them in the neck, then they, they die. But anyway, there's a very rare... And also you can summon them. It takes ten heartbeats to summon them. So cool. God, he's, he's a god at world building. But anyway, there's, like, ten in the whole world of these shard blades. Mm. And they're very sought after, and there's, like, a whole kind of economy almost based off yeah. of them. So if you're going to make special weapons... You can have all these interesting things where, like, oh, there are people searching for these weapons, or mm -hmm. there's been wars fought over these weapons, or with these weapons. Don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but and as another example, in the last campaign, mm. there was six, I mean, a large part of the story and the main plotline actually had to do with a group of special weapons mm -hmm. that were these these six weapons, uh, there's, like, a sword, an axe, yeah. a mace, um, that were weapons gifted by the gods to champions in a war in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so that has to do with what we're talking about, war and comics and stuff. Yeah. And these weapons were gifted to these champions in the past. They've been split up. They were lost. And the party was in a, cha was in a, a race to get some. The main antagonist, BBEG, was also trying to get some and stuff. And these weapons also mattered for the BBEG's sadistic evil mm -hmm. plot as well special weapons are also a great way to add like little tidbits of history mm -hmm. into like your campaign or into your story it's like if the players come across or are awarded with a weapon you can go into a little bit of detail like oh the source of this weapon how it was made how it came to be all these sorts of different things it's just add that little bit more mm -hmm. realism to the world and like feel like there's a history to things and it's cool for them yeah like that's really cool history. In uh, in Critical Role, just keep going back to <laughs> Middle Earth and Critical <laughs> Role are are uh, references. Um, there's things called the Vestiges of Divergence, mm -hmm. which are not all are weapons. Some ones like a cloak, ones like boots or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but these powerful items that were used in the in the past thing called the Divergence or mm -hmm. something. I don't know. Um, not the trilogy. Um, <laughs> I hate that. Oh, hey, now we're talking about world building. You know what world building sucks? The Divergent series. <laughs> you saw that video too? What? You see the video? No, somebody made a video about it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a little like 20 something minute video on like the horrible world building of Divergent. It's awful. It's pretty bad. I don't. I read the books and I was. Yeah. Like a tween. Same. I was like. Cool, romance. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I. Oh god. Uh, the world building is so bad. Um, I just remember being confused. So yeah, because 
it, it doesn't, the economy, it makes zero sense. Where are people making, where's the food coming from? Anyway, that, but if you want an example of what not to do, hey, if you're familiar with the Divergent. <laughs> Don't do that. Not that. Okay, what else in weaponry? Uh, the new weapons that are commonplace, that like every household owns. Perhaps like, you know, every household has like the sword. Or like the a father. gun. Everyday carry, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Does everyone carry a gun? You know what I mean? Um, that's true though. Does everyone have a sword? Is it super complex that like peasants just have swords in their house just in case? For a rainy day. For a rain. <laughs> just in case the purge. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's, that's also... Because once again, it has to do with what weapons are common, mm -hmm. what weapons are rare, why? Because of... Probably because of the amount of materials. Also, the amount of people who are expert, who have yeah. the expertise of crafting that weapons. I just thought of a really cool storyline. Okay, what if like in your world... Um, you guys can take this and steal this. What if, like, in your world, you know, there was, like, the, you know, they're, like, iron or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just basic thing. Iron's, like, really crazy. It makes the best, you know, weapons and swords and stuff. And if you have iron, you know, you're going to be killing lots of people or whatever. Very powerful, important metal. And, but the only people who knew how to craft them were, like, this, like, guild of, like, smiths or whatever. Kind of like a, a cult almost or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's only, like, a few of them, and, like, they induct people into their society, and they teach them. And, like, each village has, like, their revered blacksmith who mm. knows how to mold the iron. But then what if some other organization or some person, whatever, assassinated all of them? Mm. So nobody knows how to work iron anymore. Um, how, now, now, that's cool from a story standpoint, mm. you know, whatever. Maybe your main character is the last of the thing he's being hunted down. He has to pass on, the, whatever it is. Yeah. Most likely, actually, your character would be a young person picked up by the last remaining guy who wants to pass on the knowledge, and then he's killed somewhere in the middle of the book, and then... Anyway, um, <laughs> but, but then think now, take this concept real quick, and just apply the world-building question to it, which we'll get into in a second, well, near the end of the episode, which is, now that these people are gone, iron weapons, iron items, now they're really rare. Now mm -hmm. they're going to be hunted after. Anyway, yeah. that's just a question. Cool this touches on something that I wanted to get into before we left this topic of weaponry, is that weaponry can factor into cultures... You know, like yeah. how like there can be cultures built around, you know, devoting themselves to weaponry or warfare and all those things of like that. So if you're uh, designing weapons and designing, you know, special weapons and things like that, might might want to figure out like okay, how does it impact society? You know, perhaps there are people that are taught in swords from when they're young in this mm -hmm. nation and things like that. Also, yeah, definitely steal that if yeah you want to. Hey, theft is theft of storytelling ideas is only theft you have if you don't do anything with it <laughs> yeah okay honestly uh yeah make sure to borrow stuff but also in the future of these episodes if we think of anything just like that yeah i think it's pretty cool just all right i actually just made this note this wasn't originally in our notes here real quick now that we're on the that we're still on the mm -hmm. subtopic of war and conflict it's a big one tactics laws of war and stuff I heard, um, I was listening to this podcast, it's called Writing Excuses, mm. great podcast, authors, it has authors, um, <laughs> I don't know how to word that, but they were talking, they were talking a little bit about, like, tactics mm. and stuff, I think they were talking about world building, um, but they said, like, why do, you know, if you have your things that in medieval kind of era, but you also have some magic and, and stuff, the tactics, military tactics, will, won't be the same. You won't have, like in medieval times, a squadron of closely knit knights with shields mm. going after if there's such a thing as wizards who can cast fireball. This changes how tactics work. People now have to be more spread out or whatever, so the wizard can't just cast one spell, kill them all in one hit. Or dragon fire breath, mm. or however it is. Now this might seem incredibly niche. Yeah. There's also something to get at here for uh, like the bigger picture of like tactics like tactics can lead to other problems other than just in war. Like, you know, we have the Geneva Convention for a reason in our not in our Earth world that we live in. We have these rules set up because of tactics that have been used, and you mm -hmm. can factor that into the history of the world of, you know, shameful tactics being used in the past, and now yeah. there's, you know, rules about that, and war's yeah. been fought about that. The, law of, the laws of war. Mm. Um, if you want more information... On War and Conflict, read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. <laughs> I haven't read the whole whole thing. What I have read, that guy just... Bars. Bars. <laughs> he is so wise. Dude, every line is like, oh, dang. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've read about half the book just in quotes. 
Yeah, he... <laughs> what a great, intelligent man. Okay. Final subtopic. We're getting there. Mythology. I love mythology. 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 When you are in elementary middle school, dude, the best... Um, the best semesters or whatever of school is when you're is when you're doing Greek history and stuff. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not. And wrong. You, then you can learn about like all the Greek mythology and stuff. But the funny thing now is that you've got all the people like, well, in Percy Jackson, I okay. learned that. Okay, <laughs> we both of us are of the Percy Jackson generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, of the Percy Jackson generation. <laughs> uh, if you are of the Percy Jackson, you know exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We grew up with those books, so we. All, all, all the people we know, not all of them, a lot of people our age mm -hmm. know a lot about Greek mythology. <laughs> Some of it a little bit twisted from yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah. But, but setting, you know, because but, of, literally yeah. because of Percy Jackson. Just like a lot of people nowadays, they know a lot about the Revolutionary War and the beginning of our country because of Hamilton. Mm, true. Um, seriously, my, yeah. my little brother, he loves Hamilton. Um, and he knows, he, he's, he had a... A, a chapter or, or whatever mm. uh, of uh, U.S. history on his history course that he was taking, and he just he didn't have to study for the test because he knew everything because <laughs> he memorized it through the songs and stuff. Anyway, mm. mythology. All right, mythology. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into like teaching methods. <laughs> you know, a great way to teach your students through song, which is true. That is true. You know why? Because when I was a kid, I learned my multiplication tables. Because really? we watched these things where they put the different multiplication tables to famous songs. Um, so it, it, it was like, um, you put your right foot in, you put your left foot so uh, you put your, uh. I just learned Excel smart. I was just, oh, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and 48. See, I know, all, literally to this day, when I want to figure out the multiplication, <laughs> I literally sing the song oh in my head my to figure goodness. it out. Oh my goodness. Dude, I've remembered that from when I was like five. All right, mythology. <laughs> okay, mythology. <laughs> Sorry, mythology. Not, we're not talking about teaching methods. All right, mythology. Just start talking we'll about get it. All right. All right, hurry, hurry. First off, legendary <laughs> figures and mom. <laughs> All right, mythology has a lot of factors into it. Yep. Uh, first, let's break down some like legendary figures and moments in mythology. You know, like a lot of great examples are in Greek mythology. Trojan War. Trojan War. Hmm. Great, great example. Yep. Uh, Trojan War, different wait, quests, is, different... Wait, is Troy real? Uh, the the area it, was real, but the battle wasn't. I thought it wasn't. Oh, it is? It's real city. Yeah, but didn't happen but that way. it's a matter of debate whether the Trojan War actually took place. Yeah. That's interesting. So, it, also, but, I'm pretty sure there wasn't a giant wooden horse that was built into the I city. doubt that. <laughs> also, the whole thing about Paris and stuff. Actually, that does seem like a, a real war that would have started because of that on Earth. Hmm? How how Paris oh. his wife got stolen by the other guy. I was like, wait, we went from Troy <laughs> to Paris, France? No, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> but honestly, that is kind of like a realistic beginning to a war. Mm. Um, God, the beginning of a little war was so stupid. Also. <laughs> but anyway, that's mythology. Because mm. Troy did exist, but the Trojan War is kind mm. of a warped... Uh, you know, certain figures in the past have been kind of warped by... Yeah. Yeah. My right, history, and now there's legends about them. Mm -hmm. So, you want to figure out how the mythology works in the new world, where perhaps there are these things that did happen in the past, but now, as years has, have gone by, it's gone out of memory, it's now more just in legend, where people have, like, these stories that they tell about mm -hmm. this figure that did exist in your world, but yeah. perhaps it's twisted in a way, or something like mm -hmm. that. I was thinking, and we, we don't have this noted down here, but mythology is also closely tied to religion. Yes. Definitely if you look at, like, Greek mm -hmm. mythology mm -hmm. and stuff, very closely tied to religion. The gods were a big part of, literally, like, the baseline for all of their mythology and stuff. Okay, this next point. You, why don't you talk about yeah. this one? This is really cool. Prophecies. Prophecies can be used in so many different ways. Prophecies, They're so good. prophecies. Hallmark of fantasy. Yes. There are so many prophecies in fantasy... <laughs> It'd be hard to find a fantasy story without one. No. <laughs> um, prophecies are can arise from a variety of sources. From gods, from mystical figures, from wise men, from anything. And it can predict the future. It can start wars. 
It can start campaigns if you're running an RPG. You can use prophecies in so many different ways, and they can affect the world in so many different ways. It's literally just up to you how you want to use them, if you mm -hmm. want to use them. Uh, this is kind <laughs> of tied to physical world stuff that we talked about mm -hmm. last World Lamp episode. But like foundational myths, mm -hmm. origin myths, mm -hmm. also tied to religion. We will be talking about religion in the ne maybe the next maybe one or the next, one after maybe that. Maybe the one after that, yeah. Um, I mean, religion Religion's huge a big huge topic. But uh, I don't think we'll get a whole, ep a whole episode to itself, but it will be a big part. But anyway, origin myths and stuff, that's very tied mm. to, to religion. Um, you know, if you look at how the Greeks believed the earth mm -hmm. began, um, and then the Egyptians, and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Christians, and, and Muslims, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, then you've got just fables and, you know, like fairy tales and things like that. You know, the wives' tales and the... Things you tell by the fireplace at night about these mystical creatures, things like that. You know, just it's like might be mythological things, might be just myths that people believe in. Yeah, part of their culture. But fables can add like a nice little bit of bit of flavor to. Yeah, yeah. in things. the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, there's a whole group of people who are kind of like the oppressed slave group mm. of people, and like their whole, like their culture is like they hate them. The, this mist basically covers the land at nighttime. And they, like, hate the mist and, like, they fear the mist and stuff. It's literally mist. Mm. But because of cultural things and, like, wives' tales and stuff, they stay inside and they fear the mist. Real quick, exercise for you if you're willing to take this. Choose a, uh, maybe, like, a, um, some kind of mysterious mythological creature or, or like, fantastical creature in your mm. world. Choose a settlement. Something like that. Write a poem or a wives' tale or something mm. about it. Um... Literally, my favorite page in the Monster Manual is the Oni page because there's a little scrap paper on the side that has a little poem about the Oni, like a little mm. wives' tale about the Oni, and I love it. It's so flavorful, it's so cool, that I literally built a one-shot around it. Um, but exercise, do that for a settlement, or like a creature, like an Oni, or mm. like a dragon order. Create a little a poem, a rhyme. A, a yeah. fairy tale, a wives' tale, or whatever. Fables are a great way for you to exercise the skills that you got in seventh grade doing poems for English class, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But also, these you, they usually stem from, mm -hmm. you know, reality as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're Almost at the end. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're so close. I know this is, this is the longest episode we've ever done so far, but... Gabe, what? We're, gonna, uh, we're, gonna, we're ending all... World building episodes with this. What is the number one world building question? How does this... I can't say it, apparently. <laughs> well, what's the context? Uh, when you make a change or addition in your world, you always want to ask yourself, how does this affect the other aspects of my world? Plain and simple, there you go. Number one world building question. Yeah. Um, last week we had an example about water. Give me one right now. What's something... To make one change... Uh, there's a war fought over uh, iron ore that was found in these mountains. That war Correct. now affects the culture. Perhaps that nation, one of the nations won. They now own those mountains. They are fighting a constant war to keep things away. Perhaps your story starts in those mountains. Mm -hmm. It affects the economy. It affects the yep. culture. The economy of iron. Yep. The of iron. That nation, the defeated nation, it changes how they perceive... Mm. One little change, adding one more in the hist in the past. How does this affect the other aspects of mm -hmm. this world? Big, it, it, it's important. Yeah, very important. Um, it's important because it makes it makes you ask the question. The questions that keep your world cohesive. Yeah. When you have all these different things, it might seem cool individually, but if you don't see how adding that war changes the rest of yeah. the world. If, if you have all these things that aren't connected at all, with no rhyme and no reason, yeah. Yeah. the world just falls apart. <laughs> Elder Scrolls. Um, <laughs> um, yes, but, th you know, this is true. This is very important world-building thing. Actually, this is something you may have unconsciously realized. L reading or watching or consuming anything where someone's built a world, whether it's sci-fi or fantasy. You may pick up, like, this world building is not good, or this world building is really good. You may have not realized it, um, but unconsciously it was probably because 
They didn't ask this question. They mm. added certain things or whatever, but they didn't follow the next logical steps yeah. of how it affects everything. Asking this question is, is really important to avoid like plot holes for sure. New World. Um, yeah, like a big one for Lord of the Rings is like one change. There's big giant eagles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now everyone is, the next logical thing is like, why don't they just take the ring to Mordor or whatever? What, Gabe, we're not going to get into why they couldn't, okay? You're saying yes. It, there's a reason why they couldn't. Yeah, but it wasn't obvious. Yeah. That may not necessarily be obvious at first look, but the reason why there's explanations for why they can't do it is because Tolkien asked himself, I have eagles in my world, giant eagles. Now what? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I was actually kind of saying that I don't think it is a super... I don't think it actually is a, is a good example of this. We can do an episode on that. I would love to. Uh, no, because, yes, I know why they can't. Because mm -hmm. I've done the research and I'm a bit, you know, we're both big Tolkien fans. But the audience does it. Because that's not presented to them in, an, you know, in, in a way. They just can't read. Because it's, it's not, in Lord of the Rings, there, there's no reason, like, in no, the no. sense and stuff. It, it's difficult, it, it's just, it's not clear. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> About so, to start another hour-long podcast. <laughs> yeah, but, but, like, Brandon Sanderson does this very well. In in his books, he has these really developed magic systems or whatever. But in Mistborn, there's a certain scene, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's a certain theme, scene where something comes up, you learn about a new aspect of magic, mm. of this magic system. And so immediately you're thinking, like, okay, they should try this and this and this. Because that, what would that do? And the characters think of that, and they try it. Mm. And, and it takes two pages. Does, but just because Brandon Sanderson's like, this is the next logical steps, let me explain to the audience why or why not this works or whatever so I can set down, you know, the, the standards around this. Okay, cool. Any final thoughts before we close the episode real quick? We go to closing. Oh, if you like us at the start of this episode, don't know much about history. <laughs> Should we close with that song? <laughs> no, we're not. All right. Okay, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, this <laughs> this was the most chaotic one we've ever had. It was the episode of tangents. <laughs> Super chaotic. If you've gotten this, if you you know kept in this far, I applaud you because mm. this was chaotic. <laughs> but I think we did have some. Mm -hmm. I think we had some good information in this one. Hidden. In there, perhaps. <laughs> Hidden in the chaos and tangents. <laughs> um, once again, if you guys want to keep up to date with what we're doing, you have suggestions with the podcast, you want to get alerted when a new episode comes out. Um, I don't know if you know this, but a bonus episode came out. The, our first bonus episode hey. for the podcast. Um, you know, because if you're just expecting a new episode every Tuesday um, along the regular schedules, you may miss when the bonus episodes mm -hmm. are released. We did a bonus episode, uh, not... not last episode but the one before right before we have a bonus episode if you want to like get alerted for those and stuff follow us on instagram at d20 underscore academy mm -hmm. and we now have a discord server i Yay. mentioned this at the start all that you have to do to get into it just message us on instagram and i'll hit you up with a link get you in there we're adding a lot of things as the discord has just been opened and all that it's going to be a formative process here but the more people, the, the merrier. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of cool things in yeah, there. Yeah, I have a lot of cool time. stuff I want to do on, on this Discord thing. Yeah, um, and it'll be nice to just be able to connect with you guys. Yeah, audience. it is. It's really refreshing. Um, real quick, if, if you don't have Instagram, you don't have access to that. Mm. Another way to get into contact with us is if you visit our public anchor page, the mm -hmm. podcast public anchor page, there is a place where you can message us directly through Anchor. It's slightly hidden. And I don't know oh, how to no, unhide yeah, it. There, there is a Discord button yes. that's hidden. But there is a big button that says message. So yes. If you want to message us directly because you don't have Instagram or whatever. Also there. And I would like to get onto other social media platforms. I'm super not social media savvy though. So bear with us as we try to get onto Facebook and stuff. It may take time. Ugh, Facebook. Uh, other than that, this is kind of the end. Thank you so much for listening. Gabe, real quick. Yes. Next episode. What can they look forward to? Antagonists and villains. For all those Loki stands out there. <laughs> uh, it, it, this will not be D&D &D or anything specific. This mm. is going to be storytelling, whether you're writing a screenplay, uh, a, a, a stage play, right. uh, a novel, or you're planning your campaign. Your Titans and villains. Loki fanfic. Or, yep. you're, <laughs> or you're planning your next Loki fanfic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Antagonist and villains. I'm super excited for that one. Mm. going to be great. So look out for that one next Tuesday. And... Um, any sign-offs? Don't play Mystic. <laughs>
No, do play Mystic. <laughs> Don't play Mystic. Don't play Mystic. All right, do it. Don't. <laughs>